A few weeks ago, I did a video talking about the reasons the Rebellion wanted to avoid forming a standalone government, essentially hoping to downplay any similarities between the current Rebellion and the old Separatist groups from the Clone Wars, hence Alliance to Restore the Republic. This, however, left a pretty large question in the mind of the Rebel leadership. What exactly should be the relationship between the Rebellion and the Separatist holdouts which still operated in certain areas? Like with most things, the Essential Guide to Warfare addresses this directly, bringing in some information from older West End Games RPG sourcebook and recontextualizing it a bit, particularly the Rebel Alliance sourcebook. It's worth pointing out that while the West End Games sourcebooks mention some of the disorganization or even conflict between different Rebel groups, covering the relationship between Rebels and Separatists directly would be somewhat difficult for them to do considering it was released in 1990. 10 years before even Episode 1 came out, and ideas about what the Clone Wars looked like were very different from what we got. The Separatists as a faction didn't really exist at all. There were three different approaches to the Separatists put forward by the three most prominent leaders of the Rebel Alliance. Bail Organa took the most hardline stance that any group joining the Alliance must make their stated goal the restoration of the Republic, which is somewhat hard to reconcile with the Separatist sentiments. Mon Mothma was largely in favor of accepting even those fighting simply to self-govern away from the Empire, which during the Clone Wars and Republic would have been explicitly a Separatist position. She was, however, afraid of how this would be portrayed by the Empire, which, as we talked about in the previous video, tried to show the Rebellion as just being a continuation of Separatist sentiment. Bell Iblis was the most open to cooperation, arguing for full acceptance of any group which would want to join, short of those who had committed war crimes during the Clone Wars. The end result was that, typically, Separatist and Alliance members, while broadly seeming as a similar problem to the Empire, were generally distinct groups, fighting for distinct reasons, even if they shared a common enemy. Some Separatists renounced their past and were allowed into the Alliance to restore the Republic, including the Brick Sector commander Horn Abagene, who, after his mention in the Essential Guide to Warfare, was later fleshed out a bit more as a Commander of Organic Training, or teaching people who aren't droids how to fight, on the planet Pizandius during the Clone Wars by the Rise of the Separatist Fantasy Flight Games sourcebook. Generally, there's still some level of support between the Rebels and Separatists, even with this separation, but occasionally, in places like Atravis, these groups would even sometimes directly fight each other. We ultimately have a situation where, while the Empire was the primary enemy of both groups, for a lot of the Separatist groups the Rebellion would have been just the same thing they had already been trying to fight against in the Clone Wars, rather than a cause they wanted to jump in with. To the Rebels, working with the Separatists would have served to undermine their legitimacy in the eyes of many Republic Loyalists. The broader point being that the Rebels during the Imperial period, while they may have seemed more united in what they were trying to do, were still very different groups with very different ideas. We know about some of the splits that occurred even just within the Rebel Alliance in Legends and in Canon with characters like Saw Gerrera, but those tensions go even further than what we see in those conflicts. Either way, that's going to do it for today. If you've enjoyed, consider leaving a like, subscribing, or turning on notifications for more. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.